This quick Valheim guide will show you how to find the third boss, Bone Mass, and how to summon it and how to easily kill it. One method is a bit of an exploit, the other method is how to do it properly. And with this particular boss, it's almost easier to do it properly. Everything is timestamped below if you want to skip ahead and all you need to do in return is smash the like button like the true viking you are. So starting out with step one, to find the third boss location you need to find the swamp bio, which is a very dangerous place indeed. The map is randomly generated, but it's almost certain you will need to sail across the ocean in order to find the swamp biome. But don't worry, because once you do find it, it looks like this muddy area on the map, and you can't miss it as you're sailing past. I do highly recommend actually crafting a ship and not using a raft if you're going to go and find this biome, since it will be so much faster. You do need bronze nails to unlock ship crafting, and I've already made a guide on that linked below. Step 2. To find the bone mass boss location, you must find a boss location stone. You can find these in two places. Firstly, and easier, is outside in swamp ruins. So here we are, we've come across another one just here, and these castles are ruins in the swamp and they exist all over. They're all randomly generated so you can come across some areas that will have none whatsoever. Usually they will have some Draga outside standing guard but you guys can see there's another boss locator stone up the stairs here. But there is also a Draga spawner here which we're going to want to kill sooner rather than later. Quickly take this out, get our torch out. And then we can come upstairs here and use this. Each time you use one of these locators, it will show you the closest boss location. For example, I used one over... For example, I used another one over here and it showed me the boss location over here. So as you guys can see, you can have more than one boss location on the map. But you can summon each one of these an unlimited amount of times. Now usually these structures that you'll come across that have a chance to have the boss location spawn at will have green flame lanterns around them. So I would really just look for those. Some of them don't, but most of them do. Here's another one that has a, another boss location which we have already added. Secondly, you can find the boss location stones inside the sunken crypts that exist throughout the swamp biome. You'll need a swamp key to open them, which you get from killing the second boss as a reward. I've done a guide on how to do that already and I'll link it below. You can use the swamp key to open the crypt doors and proceed inwards. You'll find lots of muddy scrap iron piles inside that you'll need a pickaxe to get through. Since these actually block half of the dungeon doors, it is essential to bring a pickaxe with you. You'll want to be collecting the iron scrap from these deposits and withered bones that they drop, since you need 10 withered bones to actually summon the boss. I also suggest using a bow and arrow to kill the Draga through the gaps as you're mining through the mud piles. Each dungeon has a random chance to spawn a boss locator stone, so make sure that you fully explore each dungeon that you come across even though these dungeons are rather maze-like and vast, it is quite easy to get lost in them. So do take your time. Step 3. Once you reach the Bone Mass Summoning Platform, which is a giant skull altar that just looks awesome, in order to actually summon the third boss Bone Mass, you'll need 10 Withered Bones. Now, Withered Bones are found within the sunken crypts, sitting on shelves and in chests, and also dropped by scrap piles. So they're not too hard to obtain. So as you're exploring the dungeon, you're going to come across chests, which are going to hold a variety of things like 20 scrap iron, which you can make tons of iron ingots with, but also withered bones, a giant bone knotted like old wood. And just by naturally exploring the swamp biome, you can quite easily accumulate 10 of them. Once you have them, place the 10 withered bones in a quick slot to place them in the skull altar that will summon bone mass. But firstly, step four, preparing. Now this boss fight with the bone mass is the hardest boss fight in the game currently because your character's power curve is rather high when you first get to this boss. There are actually two ways to kill him. First, I'm gonna share with you the proper method, which is arguably much easier and much faster once you know my tips and tricks. And then I'm gonna be showing you a kind of exploity sort of cheap method. 
but I highly suggest before you actually do fight bone mass that you craft yourself an iron mace and fully upgrade it at the forge to level 4. Since bone mass actually has a weakness to blunt damage, it is essential that you use blunt weapons like the warhammer or the mace to kill him. Bone mass has a huge resistance to both slashing and piercing damage, so even arrows won't work versus him and fire will do very minimal damage. So trust me, you simply want to get and use an iron mace. I also highly recommend an iron warhammer as well. I'll link a guide on where to get an iron warhammer linked down below in the description. Alternatively, instead of getting the iron warhammer, you can also use stag breaker, but it makes the boss fight a little bit harder. My other recommendation if you are struggling is to actually go ahead and craft iron armor because it gives you a huge physical damage resistance against the bone masses attacks. But most importantly, what you're going to need is poison resistance mead, which halves the amount of poison damage that you take. This may seem like a lot of effort to craft, but you'll actually need to do this later anyway for the frost resistance mead when you start adventuring into the mountains, which is the next place you'll be going after killing this boss. So I highly recommend watching my guide on that which explains how to craft frost resistance mead, poison resistance mead, and you can also craft stamina and healing potions with mead that will also give you a huge amount of health and stamina regeneration. You'll also find that a lot of the enemies in the swamp biome drop entrails and you can find thistles as well and raw meat which can be used in a cauldron to craft sausages which gives you 60 health and 40 stamina increase. It's one of the best foods to craft in the game. Now you're prepared, let's go over how to kill Bone Mass, the third boss legitimately. I will show you some cheap tactics after. So let's go ahead and hotbar our withered bones on number seven and then we can go ahead and put them inside the boiling death to summon the boss. Now we're gonna have a look where the light's going. It looks like it's spawning over there. Now I'll just quickly show you, because why not? Let's go ahead and fire an arrow, fully charged. Oh, a lot, a lot of damage. It, do, it does nothing, my friends. So he summoned some more enemies. Let's get out our hammer and then wind up an attack ready to destroy them all. I love the iron hammer because it just instantly kills everybody that it hits, pretty much. Apart from this skeleton, apparently. So let's bait out an attack here. There it is. We can just step back. Watch out for the falling trees. Then we can go ham with our mace. He's about to use his poison attack, so we just back off once again. And get out of that massive AoE, because it's his poison attack, the bone masses, that does a ton of damage. So let's just bait out his melee attack once again. There it is. Watch out for those falling trees, and then we can just start hitting him again. Hitting like 156 damage off that is nuts. You guys get used to the animations, by the way. You can see, okay, he's about to throw some enemy slime, which will spawn those enemies, and then you can just take a step back to deal with that before going back and attacking him. Now, we seem to have lost his aggro a little bit here, and there's two slimes on their way over. Do take care with the slimes not to stand next to them for too long, because... They will, like, release their little poison gas cloud. So here he comes. Let's try and aggro his attack. There it is. And we'll go in and start swinging. Okay, he's using his poison, so we back off again. There's the attack. Now we can just start going ham, but he's widening up his poison, so let's take a step back right here. And we can go after these adds. You don't want the adds to build up. That's, like, the most important part about this boss fight. Now, I will show you that you can actually parry him really easy. So, I've got my shield now. I'll 100% block all of his damage there, as you can see. And then you can just start hitting him. So, if you're unsure about dodging an attack, just use a shield. Okay, let's try and... Like so. He doesn't actually stagger from the parry, but you do get a buff to your damage after parrying him, which is always really nice. So, he actually caught me with his poison there. And that's going to start doing a big dot. Now, since I have the poison resistance mead i'm actually going to be able to survive it but otherwise you can use a medium or light healing which will allow you to survive it as well let's take out these enemies 
They're also going to stack some poison on us too. See, these mobs are building up right now, so they're becoming a little bit of a nuisance there. Come at me, brother. Ah, you missed. Let's just go ham. We should just be able to kill him, even with that poison. There we go. Get wrecked, son. There you go. Really easy to kill in melee combat. So after you've defeated him, he's going to drop a wishbone and the bone mass trophy, which you need to claim the bone mass power, which I'll show you in a moment. Now, if you actually click on the wishbone in your inventory, you can now sense hidden objects. What this means is that if you go to the mountain region, you'll be able to find things like silver, which will then allow you to craft wolf armor. I've done a guide about that, link down below in the description if you're interested in progressing further in the game and also finding the next boss, the fourth boss in the game. So now I'm going to be sharing my second method with you guys, which my friend Seven Fangs actually suggested we try out in a live stream over a week ago. And I actually have now. It is very, very slow. It does work, but it is so, so slow. So as you can see, the boss platform is in the background there, and we're actually standing next to this fire fissure in the ground because you can actually use this to set bone mass on fire and he will actually take fire damage, it is possible to do so. So it just makes the boss fight a little bit quicker. So next we need to go ahead and build ourselves a workbench like so. And then we need to grab ourselves the staircase and we're just going to start building a ladder up this tree basically. And the reason we're using one of these thicker trees is because they can't actually be destroyed by anyone. You can't destroy them with an axe, the enemy boss can't destroy them with his physical attacks. So essentially you're going to be completely safe if you use this tree as a foundation for your structure. After you get to a certain height, the ladder will turn red, which means structurally it won't hold its own weight. So what you need to do is you need to build a beam coming from the tree, like that. And then once that's connected, it's going to be green again, like so. So you can just carry on building your rickety ass structure to the top of this tree. So you essentially want to keep climbing until you reach the skybox. So as you can see right now, I can't build anything. So if I actually go lower, now, now I can build things again. So now I'm going to, from here, start building out like a little platform area. Then go ahead and build a crafting bench inside. And we're also going to have a hole in the floor so we can shoot bone mass from above. So as you guys can see, we finished our little structure here. Ideally, bone mass will be sitting underneath us on this fire, which means he'll be taking flame damage and we'll just shoot him from above as well. But I mean, really, we could just go AFK and he would eventually die anyway, making this technique pretty damn easy. Here we go. And then we can actually just start running away. And I'm just going to go ahead and tag him once like that. You guys can see that literally did no damage at all. All right, now we've got him right to the bottom of the tree. He's just trying to figure out how to get here. So it took me quite a while to actually maneuver bone mass into the correct position because there were so many trees in the way. So I actually had to end up cutting them down during the boss fight. And then finally, he actually managed to maneuver himself underneath me. And then I climbed up to the top, my little safety tree house. And now he's literally just standing underneath me. I'm going to go AFK and make a cup of tea while he slowly burns to death. You'll notice that he is ticking for 1.5 damage every couple of seconds, but he's also being hit for zero damage. And that's because of his fire resistance and it's raining. You'll notice if I use arrows and I hold down for maximum amount of damage, I do between 15 and 16 damage. What you'll notice is that I also train up my archery skill, which is level 42. Now having bows level 42 this far in the game is actually pretty damn high. And even with that, he actually still doesn't take a lot of damage. So you're going to need to have a hell of a lot of arrows to actually use this technique. So I sat there for around 10 minutes and just pelted this poor guy with arrows. And over 100 arrows later, he had hardly lost a quarter of his health bar. So honestly, this is so slow, it's unbelievable. Now I have read on the Wikipedia that you can use frost arrows because they do more damage. However, 
At this point in the game, you haven't actually been to the mountain region to get the freeze glands, nor have you been to the plains to get obsidian, since they're both much higher level areas. So while yes, this method does work, it is so unbelievably slow that I highly recommend that you instead just use a mace to kill the boss because it's so much faster. And once you've learned the boss's skill set, it's going to be a lot easier as well. So now let's check out the bone mass power. Bones and viscous goo held together by some unforeseen force. Offer it to the sacrificial stones. Wanderer, look at your feet. That tread upon our tomb. One thousand bones without their meat will drag you to your doom. So bone mass gives us resistance versus physical damage. Resistance versus blunt, slash, and piercing damage specifically. This is one of the best powers in the entire game right now. Since so many enemies do physical damage, this is going to be especially useful in the mountain, but especially in the plains, where you'll find the final boss that currently exists in early access version of the game. So if you guys want a guide on the mountain region where you can find this next boss, check out the link in the description on the next things you need to do to progress the game. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.